Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Marion. We are here with uh, Ms. Massenburg, and it is actually the 50th anniversary of the signing of the Civil Rights Act. And as you know, Congressman Connolly has initiated a project called the Northern Virginia Civil Rights Archive. And that archive is to collect testimonies from those persons who either grew up in uh, Northern Virginia or came here during segregation, Jim Crow, had to experience inequality and the struggles of that. Yes. Um, and also those who may have gone to the March on Washington. So we know that you grew up here, you've had some great, um, you have a great testimony to tell so we really want to get that on camera. And the videos that we're taking will be housed at the Library of Congress. Um, George Mason University Folklife Program under the Northern Virginia Folklife Archive, okay. the libraries of uh, Prince William County and Fairfax County. Okay. So on behalf of the congressmen and all of those entities, I want to thank you for participating in oh, this very, very important welcome. project. Very welcome. So you ready to get started? I'm ready to get started. All right. Why don't we start by you giving us your full name, okay. um, your birth date, and where you were born. Uh, my full name is actually Velmarine. I was Velmarine Johnson and uh, now go by Velma. It's too hard to pronounce Velmarine. So I'm now Velma Massenburg. I was born in Washington, D.C. in 1947, actually. And uh, we lived in Washington for a long time, for eight years. I moved out here when I was almost nine moved out in July of 1956 and uh, I was turning nine in August of 1956. So my dad moved us here because he owned his own business and he wanted my mom and I to have a better life and he thought moving us to the, it was then country, it wasn't suburbs, it was country, moving us to the country would, would make a better life. We had a garden and a nice home he built for us so it's wonderful. Yeah. So he bought his own land here? He bought his own land. He bought three and a half acres of land in a little area now we used to call Tremont. And uh, it actually is between Falls Church and Maryfield. But uh, in those days, every little area had its own name. So we were Tremont. Tremont. Oh, that's... <laughs> <laughs> so what was it like growing up in Tremont and the Maryfield Falls Church area? I mean, things were segregated. It was segregated, So yes. talk a little bit about that. Okay. Yes, it was segregated. And uh, we lived in an area on Hollywood Road, and which is now Hollywood Gardens. Most people now know Hollywood Gardens. As a matter of fact, I told my daughter one time, that used to be a farm. There were actually cows there that lived right next to my house. And she said, no, there's no way. <laughs> yeah, that was a farm. And right next to it was my parents' land and some others lived on that road. And that's now uh, an apartment complex called Hopkins Glen. My parents leased the land to two builders. They wanted to build it. In those days, there was nowhere really for African Americans to live. They lived with their parents if their parents had land and a home. But young married couples, there's nowhere to go. So they leased this land from my parents. They built these apartments so that African Americans could have a place to live apart from their parents. So it was wonderful growing up here. It was really great. We were kind of divided. It was a funny situation there because Lee Highway was the main road there, was the main highway. And on one side were, were the whites. That was the white community. On the other side was the black community. And I was sharing with Congressman Connolly that we were happy, we didn't realize, we knew there were places we could not go. And sometimes that was disconcerting because there was a movie theater, for example, in Maryfield. And this the movie was the drive theater, in? that was the drive-in theater. You remember the mm -hmm. drive-in theaters? That was the drive-in theater, but we couldn't go there. So we had to pass that drive-in to go to Centerville. That was the closest drive-in theater that we could go to in those days. So sometimes you did realize you 
you couldn't go somewhere that was right in your backyard. You had to drive. But my dad and mom always made it so much fun because it was a family outing and we got to drive and ride, <laughs> you know, in the car to go. Yeah. yeah. But uh, other than that, it was, it was not mean. No one was mean to you. There were just places you couldn't go. You knew you couldn't go, so you were fine with that. But there were good places we could go and have fun and enjoy each other. So as long as you didn't go to those restricted places, you were okay. You were okay. Yeah. And uh, I think a lot, because we really are in the South, I think people don't realize we're not in the deep South. So we didn't see crosses being burned in yards or lynchings or anything. We didn't see any of that. We lived apart, but really you lived peaceably. Mm -hmm. So I never experienced anyone calling me any names except once. Once in my entire life, I heard someone refer to me as a nigger. And what, what happened in that? That was, I was grown. I was I had graduated from high school and I wanted to live in an apartment. And my girlfriend and I were gonna, going to be roommates. And we went to Pine Springs. It's still called Pine Springs today. Which is the which white, is r the white part across, right? of Lee Highway. Right. So now civil rights has happened and we're fine. We can go and live there. So we went to the office and it was closed uh, to make application. The office was closed. So we turned around to come back to our car and there was a man who was emptying his trash. He was living there and he yelled at us and says, we don't want any niggers living here. And I was mortified. I never had anybody call me that, not to my face anyway. Right. I was mortified. So we had never experienced that. So that is my remembrance of living segregated. There were places you couldn't go, yeah. but no one came into your space and harmed you or mistreated you or anything. Yeah, yeah. Um, now what did your mother do for a living? Was she a... My mother was a housewife. Okay. She raised me. Okay. And my dad worked. Okay. So she didn't work until after I left the home. Mm -hmm. And then she got a job really just to support herself. But, you know, in those days, mothers didn't work much. Yeah. And the father supported the family. Yeah. yeah. So what schools did you attend? I, when I first came here, like I said, I was going to the fourth grade that next school season. So I came here. We're sitting at James Lee Community Center, but this was James Lee Elementary School. And this is where I came. In the fourth grade and I stayed here fourth grade fifth grade sixth grade and seventh grade and then I went to Luther Jackson High School which was newly opened for African Americans the only black high school in Fairfax County before that time uh, the black children went to either Washington DC to school or they went to Manassas to school so this was the first high school that everyone could go to in their own county. And they came from Centerville, they came from McLean, they came from Falls Church, everyone went to this school. So that was my brand new community. Luther Jackson days were awesome days. We had a wonderful community. We had teachers who treated us like their own children. We were nurtured there, they cared about us, they taught us, and uh, we didn't know we didn't have the best books. We didn't know we had secondhand books. We didn't know that we didn't have what uh, the white children had in their schools. We didn't know that. Mm -hmm. We were happy in our school. Mm -hmm. So we got to do everything. They played basketball, they played football. You know, I was a major rat in school. I was a cheerleader. I was in the choir. We had a good time. Yeah. And we learned. And I know that a lot of people, after we grew up, we realized we really didn't have the best. But I'm really proud that so many of us went on to do wonderful things. Mm -hmm. So we're resilient people. And we took what we learned and we went out and did great things. We've got notable attorneys 
that came out of our school, engineers. We have uh, people who have gone on to be to work in civil service. We've had wonderful people come mm -hmm. out of our school. So it sounds like the environment was just a place where you could really grow. It really was. It absolutely was. What was the how did you feel? I mean, there must have been so much pride in walking in to this brand new school. It was. It was. I was so happy that uh, we got to experience this. And um, we had, we, it was a brand new school and I was new, so I really didn't know much about it until I began to go to the 10th grade and the 11th grade when we really began to get it that uh, we, we're special here. This beautiful school was made just for us. And that's the way we felt. I think that's the way everybody felt. Mm -hmm. So we didn't feel that we didn't have. Mm -hmm. You know, we really did take pride in our school and your, still do, Yeah, still do. What was your graduation like? My graduation was, uh, I think we had about 65 people to graduate. Uh, I was so excited, I couldn't stand myself. I couldn't stand myself. Our baccalaureate service um, uh, was wonderful. It was on a Sunday. And I just gotta tell the story about one of your aunts. Uh, I wore a white lace dress. And to this day, to, well, she's passed away now. But until she passed away, every time she would see me, she would tell that story <laughs> about my white lace dress. She said everybody else, they had on this white dress or that way. But here she comes in a white lace dress. You know? <laughs> she would always tell that story. But graduation was so exciting for me and my dad and my mom. But my father, 